Mind Gap Podcast. Welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And Doug, are you more afraid of doctors or dentists? I think generally probably doctors. Really? Because there's more that could be wrong with me if I go. Whereas dentists, it's just like, I need to go to the dentist. Like real bad. It's been many years. Are Um, you saying that? Now or is that part of now. the answer? Oh, no, like this like is right true. Now, yeah, I, true. Like, yeah. I need to go. Like, Same. I yeah. I moved <laughs> over six years ago, and I, like you know I moved out here, and even then before we moved, I needed to go, and I moved out here. I'm like, ah, I gotta find a dentist, and then yeah. I just didn't, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm overdue for a cleaning yeah. big time. So I'm um, I'm in the same boat. I went I went I, pr- I probably went I want to say ten to fifteen years without. Going to the dentist, like I, I lapsed big time when I when I hit like my like late twenties into like mm-hmm. through my thirties, and then I finally found a dentist in Chicago. Uh, it was fantastic. Got myself back on a regular schedule. Moved to Grand Rapids. Have not been to the dentist since. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need to do it. Also, I I don't want to go through the whole like, hey man, you probably need braces bit. Like I just I don't want to. Are they still trying to sell you on braces? I mean, I have I have like my lower teeth. Like I have a, a tooth that's like you know. Crooked. It's trying to, it's trying to uh, do a jailbreak. It's trying to be like, I'm going back in, man. I'm like, going rogue. So, um, and, and like when Natalie got like a spacer put in, uh, yeah. the, the doctor goes, you know, this is, this is, you know, probably comes from the parents. And she looked at me and she's like, I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but if you want a consultation, I'd be happy to. And you smiled with your top up. teeth and went, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I got <laughs> straight curly <laughs> whites right up here. So uh, I, I think from a doctor standpoint, it's just like a dentist. It's like, hey, you got cavities or, hey, you need fucking braces with a doctor. It's like, <clears throat> I mean, it could be like, hey, you're fat. Uh, it could be like, you know, diabetes. It could sure. be, you know, we got to we got to put the glove on and dig in there, dig in those holes to see what we can find. You know, it could, it, there's all sorts of stuff where it's like, hey, what's wrong with you? And it right. could be any slew of things. It's like, uh, well, here's the thing. I I agree with that. Like the prognosis could be worse with the with the doctor typically, but I just as far as like appointments go, I feel more pain at the dentist. Like when I like if I'm afraid of going, mm-hmm. like I the doctor's like I'm gonna cup these now cough. All right, I'm gonna put a stethoscope on you. We're good to go. You know, maybe yeah. a blood draw. But like with the dentist, he's sitting there like just jamming these needles and these sharp objects into your tender pink gums. So I'm more scared of the dentist because I feel like the appointments themselves are much more painful at the dentist. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it depends on because for me, it's like you go to the doctor. They're like, guess what? We got to do a blood test. So you need to go do that. And it's like, Ugh, fine. It's like, do I need to fast? They're like, yeah, you got to fast. It's like, cool. So, so they're like, yeah, so just the- go do it. Go do it and then come back in a month. And I'm like, awesome. Cool. So I got to come <laughs> back. Cool. So I got to go do this. I got to fast. <laughs> I get the blood drawn. I got to send it in. And I got to come back. And then they're going like, to read me my test results. And it's just like, uh, I feel like so, the last doctor I went to just kind of pulled, pulled one over on me. I don't, I don't know. I was kind of annoyed. He was just like, did kinda, he try to I, I hadn't been to a doctor oil? in a while. And he was just like, I don't know. I feel like he wasn't a very good listener. I feel like he, he, he heard certain things and like latched onto those and didn't hear what I said after the fact. Like I told okay. him, I was like, I used to be a really bad snorer. And I also used to have what I call sleep attacks. I would essentially just fall asleep out of nowhere because I was severely overweight. And then okay. he goes, I think you need to go see a, a pulmonologist. Like you need to go see someone on that because you're having sleep attacks. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm not having them anymore. I right. used to have them. And then yeah. like months later, he goes, so those sleep attacks. I'm like, no, I'm not having those anymore. 
That was like 2017, 2018 yeah. was the last time I had those. He's like, so you're not having them? I'm like, no. No. And it was just like, I'm like, yeah, my shoulder's kind of bothering Welcome. me. He's like, let me refer you to this uh, this other guy, this orthopedic guy. I was like, I was just going to so many goddamn appointments yeah. all over the place. And then I was doing blood tests nonstop. And he's like, oh, your liver enzymes are a little high. Uh, you know, We're going to have you do another blood test in about two months. And we'll have you come on. But I was just like, man, I don't know. This kind of feels like a racket. Like, I trust you. But I also don't like you. <laughs> right. So. Also, are you putting an addition onto your house? Because you seem to be yeah. wanting to bill insurance for a lot. Yeah. I was also like, there was a place like right by my house. That's where I went the first time. And then he kept mm-hmm. sending appointments for me like 15 minutes away. I was like, dude, like, I want to go to that one. Yeah. Because it's close to me. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? It is so, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, I dig it. Yeah, I get it. It's like one of those things like neither one of those do you really want to go and do because like, great. No. Tell me, but tell me I'm either the, okay or I'm doing something wrong. So the doctor uh, is more aggravating for practical Doug is what it sounds yeah. like to me. Like, especially much at more my age. Ag- yeah. When I was younger, right. you didn't have to do blood tests. Right. It's like, yeah, you're fine. Now you're like, hey, man, we got to make sure that everything's working correctly because right. God knows what could be existing. You got to make sure good. that your you exhaust isn't falling off. Yeah. Yeah. You got to do that. You got to test to make sure, you know, and that's the thing is that it's got to be preventative. If you're like, I feel fine. It's like, yeah, well, you don't know what else is brewing in there that you don't know about. So when you stop feeling fine, it's like, guess what? This has been you're going too, on for a while. So too late. Yeah. Too late, motherfucker. So, yeah. Yeah. Overall, which one would I be least excited for? Probably the dentist because, okay. you know, it's going to take longer, you know, than like a general checkup, you know, for a doctor, hopefully, hopefully, um, but yeah, prognosis wise, it's like doctor could be way worse. A lot more could a lot more can go wrong there. Yeah, <laughs> lot lot worse things can happen on that side of the fence. Hey, doctor I mean, told man. me I'm falling apart. I probably need to find a new doctor now too. Because yeah, I just set I was, my I got my doctor's appointment for. Hague was on my ass hard about that. I'm he, sure was he was like he goes you and Ballmeyer because I'm gonna call him out publicly. Bob won't go see the doctor because he's too scared about what he's going to find out. Hey and, man, uh, I get it. I look, it's not. I'm just calling him out publicly to goat him into going because I want him to be healthy. But Hague was on both of us. And I was like, Hague, I finally set my fucking appointment. So get off my back. It's a good friend. July 30th. Hague, you're a good friend. Yeah. I think I need you to hear that. Here, um, here's the thing because, I can't understand about yeah. doctors, though, is like my appointment is July 30th. Mm-hmm. I booked that in February. <laughs> like they have no availability. He's that. It's that hot of a ticket in town. Like people... Seriously, dude, he just, sells that's out. That's bizarre, he man. He sells out regularly, man. He's 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 a big deal, you know. <laughs> Is this guy rock star? All right, yeah, <laughs> rock star. Yeah, no, I I get that because like uh, I, when I was finally doing well, they're like, all right, we'll just set your next appointment like a year from now. So we'll mm-hmm. just put an arbitrary date, but we can always change it. Yeah, that date came and went. They didn't notify me. Nothing. They were just like, <laughs> nope. Like we're all. I just fell off the. Listen, yep. it's my responsibility to take care of myself. But if you sure. put a date in there and you don't even follow up. I'm like, you didn't put the date in. You don't care. <laughs> That's not, this is not, this me. is, this this is we both suck. We both suck. It's on me and it's on you. I'm getting, you know, what? I also need to go to the eye doctor. I'm getting texts from them. They're like, Hey, you're overdue. I'm like, God, I don't want to do any of this. Jeez, I'm just lazy. Man. I still want to go. <laughs> I just don't want to do it. It's like, what do I got to do it on a fucking Saturday? I'm like, I don't want to do that. That's the, that's the other thing is that I feel like it's really hard to find, at least up here, no one's open on the weekends and I get it. Yeah. But if you, if you are appointments, like a point, a dentist, uh, eye doctor, uh, regular doctor, like I do feel like it's really hard to get there on the weekdays sometimes. Like eh, maybe have some like, like abridged uh, weekend hours. I mean, honestly, if who I can, I could find time to do it during the week. I just, I understand. Just, I'm just saying that it gets hard for some people, you know, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying I'm just, to give um, you the benefit of the doubt, Doug. Thanks. But I, to, to to Bob, come in here, Bob. Come I want to tell you something. I know exactly how you're feeling because I was that guy too. There's a reason why I didn't go to the doctor for the longest time is because I was afraid of what they were going to tell me. It's just like not stepping on the scale for a long time because you're like, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm going to like the number. Right, it's going to pop up on the scale, but the bill comes due. <laughs> Sooner or later, the bill comes due. So you'd rather know. And prevent it. And this is coming from a guy who hasn't been to the dentist in many years and is not followed up with a doctor and is not making his appointment with the eye doctor. But take it from me. <laughs> do it. <laughs> just do it. Just bite the bullet and do it and find out what's going on. Don't just do it for you. Do it for your daughter. 
Do it for your daughter, Bob. Do it for your wife. Do it for us. All right. Do it for my get podcast. Do you guys know you can follow my get podcast on all social medias at my get podcast. It's true. We're there. And you could also check us out at youtube.com. slash my get podcast. If you're not already here, which if you are here, thank you so much. Consider hitting that like button. Consider hitting the subscribe button. We appreciate it. Um, I also host a video game live stream on Fridays at 8 p.m. Central. So you can come check that out. Uh, it's always a good old time. We played Ultimate Chicken Horse last week, which is probably one of the worst games for me. It's not great, <laughs> but I play it because we have fun. I usually get one opportunity to win. And that opportunity came and went and I lost. And I called it. I go, this is my one chance to win tonight. And if I don't get this, I'm not going to win. And I was like, just, I was so close. And I just, I botched it. I botched the game. And it's, uh, it was, there was a lot of, t- a lot of me doing this, laying my head on the <laughs> microphone in shame because I'm just not good at platformers. I'm not good at jumping. I'm not good at any of that stuff. And I played with Noah and Alpaca and both of them, especially Noah. Like, he runs that game, right? He's, he's such a good just yeah. platformer. He's good at like jumping and whatever. And, if you ever played that game or haven't seen me play, essentially you create your own level of your own nightmare and you try to get through it. And if everyone gets through, no one gets points. If everyone dies, no one gets points. So you have to make it just hard enough that at least one person is going to fail. And then you can you can come out the other side and win. So I'm uh, not sure what this week's going to be, but uh, you know, stay tuned for that. It'll be great. And real quick, I just want to give another shout out to Robert Bowling uh, for being on the show oh, last man. week. If you have not checked out that episode, I highly recommend it, especially if you're into gaming or the gaming industry. Robert Bowling is a currently a co-founder of the Midnight Society, which is a gaming company. They're currently developing a drop, a dead drop. It's a vertical extraction shooter. He also has like over 15 years of AAA game developing experience. He's owns his own his second record label. Uh, right. he's just, he's absolutely fascinating guy. I loved his perspective on the gaming industry and he was such a lovely guest. He was very kind with his time and he was silly. He played along with us. He was great. So, uh, highly absolutely. recommend that episode. So, hoo hoo And on that note, it's time to feed the, feed the beast, the corporate gods. That it is. All right. Forget what you've heard. We've all heard it. Farmers markets are lame. Well, they ain't. Farmers markets are still the beating heart of a bygone era. By golly. You can get yourself some honey, some strawberries, meet locals and get cookies from the guy who can't pay his domain fee. So he just uses Instagram for all of his business. It's a real hoot and a half for the whole family. Do not let farmers markets die. I vow anyone who hears this ad on this pod talk show, get out to your local market, get some veggies and an organic mood enhancing soap and keep America alive or else I will personally come to your home and steal all of your produce. And that ain't a joke. Look, I already got one of y'all IP addresses. 192.168. So on my side, let me just give you a little uh what happened yeah. here. As soon as you as as soon as you garbled, you actually mm-hmm. garbled, and I didn't know if the ad was done or if I had lost you. <laughs> Like it actually, it the whole system just gummed up for me in real time. So that that could not have been that could not have been more perfect for me and my experience. Yeah. So thank there you, you go. for that. I'm glad. I'm glad I could put it's, you in suspense like that. What I'll say is, it's incredible how many of our uh, sponsors like us to uh, want their they they make these requests. They send in the copy and they say, "Hey, can you please read this at the top of your lungs?" Mm-hmm. It just amazes me that everyone has Honestly, that similar style. I gotta say, it's my wheelhouse, and I I love it. You know, that's 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 what I do, and that's why they're asking for it. Yeah, they can, they I, I they play know Angry what Dad the, well. You know, they know what the theme is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 
That's right. They say, make it your I'll own. Be- I'm like, cool. I'm going to shout. I'm going to shout this. I'm going to shout. Shout. shout from let it all out. Yeah. Mm. These are the things that we're trying to sell about. You know what I'm saying? Whoa. <laughs> Pay those bills. You know? Whoa. Make that paper. So, Justin. Yes. <clears throat> I, had, I had a couple things happen to me this past weekend. Um, and it got me thinking about the simple things in life. Those those little things, those little pleasures that yeah. pop up here and there. Not big deals. Some of them physical, some of them just like little itty bitty esoteric sort of things that I'm like, oh, this is awesome. This mm-hmm. is cool. I live for these little moments. And it got me thinking like, what are some of those simple moments that happen to us in our lives that we should take a moment and we should appreciate? So I asked you. I said, "Hey, what are some simple think think up some simple things, some simple some simple pleasures that um, you think would you know be cool to call out and share? And then if people aren't familiar with them, they can fucking try it. And we're not talking about like you know two fingers, two knuckles deep in your butt. I mean, it could be. Uh, that doesn't seem like a simple pleasure. That seems like a complex date night with yourself, which is that cool. seems like you know there's some ramp yourself. up involved. Yeah, yeah." It takes some, probably some prep, you know, probably just yep. like a lot of salads 72 hours before, you know, probably want to do a little bit of an enema or 27 to make sure it's good to go. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. want to be firing out that thing on un- unintentionally. So, but Justin, take your ring, take your rings off, rings off, they cut the nails, fingernails. You do not oh, want to go in with long fingernails. Time. You will no. regret it. Right. And just, you know, what, do yourself what, a favor. Make sure you have no open wounds in your hand. That also, yeah, salt, also not good. You don't yes, want any salt. No. Nope. Salt, they, they say don't salt the wound. They mean it. And they also say don't salt the butthole. I, pff, boy, if that isn't, I've, I've heard that tons that of times. a nickel I mean, every time. That was, that's part of my family crest, you know, from the, the Cochrane families from Scotland. <laughs> that I can, I will believe, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> don't salt the butthole. I don't even know what that was. It wasn't Scottish. I didn't warm up. Close enough, up for me? Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. It was good. I liked it. Justin. Yeah. What's uh what's a simple pleasure <clears throat> that uh you know what? Let me start. Let me start. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna offer you and I'm gonna take it right back. Let me start because this was Sounds my good. idea. So I wanna I wanna I wanna set the tone. So the set example the I gave you was I was doing some yard work over the weekend. <laughs> And uh, I was like, God, look at all these fucking weeds everywhere. And I, I'm usually good for like one weed pull. And then I just give up the rest of the season because I hate doing it. <laughs> I hate pulling weeds. Yeah. I did that really. I let it go last year in the backyard. And boy, we had Christmas trees growing. And <laughs> tell you what, Christmas trees do not exist back there. And they were, it was awful because I was like, yeah. fuck this. I don't want to do it. Anyway, I was getting in there. I was pulling some weeds and I got this really obnoxious weed and I pulled, I pulled it out all the way out and I got it by the root and I looked at it. And I was like, fuck you, buddy. Didn't fuck snap you. off. Wasn't Didn't a multi pull. I yeah. got it. I did the, I was doing some twisting and I just, I, the satisfaction of pulling that son of a bitch out root stem and all. I was like, yes, yep. victory. And I threw it down the pile. And then I fucked up like the next 10, like <laughs> after that, but boy, I got that one all the way in. I was like, yeah, <laughs> You're not coming back. <laughs> so that was That's a good one. That is a good yeah. feeling. I've I yeah. have uh, experienced that moving into our house last year, um, and kind of like making the yard our own, like going through and pulling some things out. Like that was definitely you. You you get the whole thing, and you're like, yeah, I just won. I just yeah. I've eradicated this the bloodline. Yeah. Of this. No plant. more from you, buddy. Um. I so one of the ones that uh, I it's this. I, this d- d- probably won't make sense, but, um, or it's going to seem very silly, but for some reason when it happens, I'm just like, I, I win the evening. Uh, so our, uh, we do a, a mixture of wet and dry dog food for, for our pups. And when I'm using the can opener to open up the, the can of dog food, um, usually I'll go around the whole thing and right at the end, it jumps or whatever and it's attached and it won't. It, and then I have to like do this and then pull it off. And there's this like pointy thing of metal that wants to kill me and this and that every once in a while I'll hit it just right. And it's a perfect, the, the, the lid is perfectly cut and it's smooth and it just pops off. And I'm like, I don't know why, but when that happens, I'm like, going to be a good night. 
That's <sighs> that is. I don't know what it is, but that again, it's so silly. But when that happens, I'm like, good. I didn't have to struggle with this. Just makes that my night. Is, that is so awesome. That is. <laughs> That leads into like, uh, that reminds me of one of the ones I had my list, which is like, uh, uh, this is more esoteric, uh, but it's encountering a problem, thinking you're gonna have to call an expert to fix it, then realizing there's a simple fix and you resolve the problem. I'll give you two examples. All right. Uh, So Natalie got a new bike for her birthday and we realized that the back tire is off from the track the metal? I don't know, like the tires just sort of like leaning over. So she got, actually got a, a, a bike with brakes, brake handles. Like and it's stuff cockeyed? Like so, or, so or it's, it's like, rubbing it's on like, the brake. So like when she's like going, it's like rubbing on the brake. Yep. And it was making a weird yeah, noise. Yeah. We were all set to go out and ride bikes. And now it's like, dad, my bike's making a weird noise. And Jill was telling me about it. She's like, I need your muscles to like push this in back on the track. And I go and I spend like my, my, my thumbs are still like sore today. I'm trying to push this in. <laughs> yeah. And like, I was having a hard time gripping stuff today. Cause I'm like, ouch, I really pushed into it. I couldn't get it to work. And I was like, fuck, we got to take this to the bike shop. Don't we? And yeah. now I was all bummed. She's like, I wanted to go on a bike ride. I was like, God damn it. Like, I just don't know anything about this shit. And I give up so easily on this stuff. Cause I'm like, I don't know how this stuff works. I don't know how yeah, it works. Yeah. And then, like, I got the bright idea. I'm like, well, what if we deflate the tire? Because this is a full tire, and I can't push it in because it's full. So what if we deflate it? Nice. So I, I took the air out of it, put it back on, refilled it up, fixed it right that instantly. And I was like, yeah, all right. I did, did that. <laughs> I was like, okay. Because, I mean, you know how dumb I would have been, like, taking it to the bike shop and being like, the, the, the tire won't work. And I goes, oh, yeah? <laughs> Ta-da! that'll be 75 dollars you right. know like <laughs> i guarantee you though that is not the dumbest thing that they've ever had brought into their shop no but it's like one of those things where you're like god damn it like i just yeah. wish i would have would have understood this another one was around christmas time i was uh i was like putting a bunch of recycling into our garage to like mm-hmm. prep it for recycling day and there is a light switch in our garage and there is one <clears throat> switch that is taped up <clears throat> it has never been pushed down it was always taped up and i never really knew what it was i never asked any questions it was just taped in the up position you've just accepted it from the day you moved in i was like forward. cool that obviously is supposed to stay on so don't want to turn it off or I maybe the it. demons come in you know yep. like i don't know i don't know what that's the demon switch that makes sense right? absolutely you know like yeah. i don't want to have to do anything that'll you know result in any real I don't want to have to call things. another expert. Yeah, right? To get these demons out. Yeah. Um so I uh so I I was putting this recycling in and I, I brought it down and, and I didn't realize it but I had there was the the boxes, you know, the tensile strength of boxes and how difficult they can be for being very familiar. Store. I brought it down and apparently <laughs> this box was so intense it actually broke the tape and turned the switch off. And then all of a sudden I was like, what's going on? Like everything in the, in the, in the garage, like the light was still on, but things just seemed different. And I realized that the garage door opener, like wasn't working. And I was like, Oh, what the fuck? I was like, "Uh Oh, this isn't good. And, and then I realized like every like five minutes for the next two days, the, it would just beep in the garage. And I didn't know oh, why. Really? So I was like, I don't know, the garage door just opened slower and everything like that. I'm like, this is weird. And then eventually the garage door didn't open at all. I was like, fuck. Okay. How do, oh, my God. I'm either going to have to manhandle this door open <laughs> and then get the car out and then manhandle it closed. Or I'm going to have to fucking call like somebody. I'm like, God damn it. I was all mad. and I couldn't figure yeah. it out. And I had an app on my phone to open up the garage door. It wasn't connecting. And I was like, God damn damn it i was just doing everything i could and then i looked at the wall and i was like hey that light switch that's down the tape's broken and i was like i flip it on and like the light goes back to normal (laughs) and the garage door had been operating on battery power that's why it was beeping because i turned off the power to it yeah and i was like and instantly everything was fine i was like ah Oh, thank God, because I would have to call this guy and be like, the garage door is beeping now, it doesn't work. And he's like, oh, yeah? Click. Found it. $75. That's going to be $100. You know, it's like, ah! <laughs> this was always taped up and I didn't know why. And now I do. 
Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. But when so that's just more you had your like own light bulb moment. Right. It's like a relief of like, oh, thank God. I don't have to look like a complete fucking dumbass in front of an expert. Right. You know, like I don't it don't work no more. I came in here. I put recycling in it. Stop. Does it not like recycling? Is it is it anti-climate? Does it need <laughs> fossil fuels? It's like, hey, <laughs> there you go. Idiot. You know? Um, I'm sorry I made you come out here on New Year's Eve. I couldn't get my garage door open. It so. just it was just beeping at me. I don't know what was going on. It kept beeping. Yeah. I thought, man, it's just letting us know that everything's cool. As I was thinking through these, I realized that a lot of a lot of the ones that I was coming up with had to do with like timing. Mm-hmm. Like when you are like cooking and everything just happens to like you do your best to make sure everything finishes and comes out around the same time. But like when you've got 10 different things going and somehow everything finishes at like the exact right time. And I was just like that. There's just something you're like, I should probably open a restaurant. I'm really good at like that, that one time that it happens. But then other like when you're at a restaurant and, you know, you're you're eating your salad or your soup or what, like the minute you finish one thing, the next thing's ready. Or the minute that you go to the bathroom and come back, the food is being brought to the table. Like anything that like when timing lines up for me, that's just super, uh, super satisfying. But more of a a, a tangible one is uh, because we just moved in, we've been painting a lot. When you're painting a room and you pour the paint into the roller tray when you pour the exact amount that you need to finish the job yeah. and you don't have to open it back up and do like, just a, like I've got like half a wall and I'm like, God damn it. I'm out. And I don't, you try to pour just a little bit, but then you always pour too much or you don't want to pour too little because you're like, nah, I need to pour it again. Like you're just a little bit by little bit when you pour it and you're just like, Oh my God, I'm going to have enough to finish this room. And you hit it and you're like, you just run out on the last stroke. You're like, I did it. I did it. It's amazing. It's, it's efficiency, baby. so good. Yeah. Practical Doug approves that message. That's Absolutely. Sure. Like that's when that stuff works out and you're like, oh yeah, <laughs> that feels good. You're yeah. Like, yes. Or like you're cooking and you're like, oh shit, do I have enough broth to make this? And you pour it out and it's exact and you're like, oh yes, yes. I do. <laughs> Woo. We did it, baby. By the skin of our teeth. We got this done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those, yeah. those are good things. Uh, well, yeah, it's always it's it's like I said, just the 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 like, and I didn't know which way you like. I told you earlier when you had brought this up, I didn't know which way you wanted to go with it. Like simple pleasures, like things working out like that, or just things that make your day brighter, right? Like, yeah. so one of the things that that, and I have full control. This is one of those I didn't know if this should go on the list, but I had full control over this, so I get to decide if I, you know, if I had, but like. Some days I just don't, and then my whole day is thrown off. If I if I get up in the morning, work out first thing, take a shower, and I'm ready for the day, my day goes immeasurably better than when I wake up, make coffee, sit around, just I'm too tired. And then I the whole day I'm thinking like, well, when do I shower? Because I have to work out. When do I work out? Do I do it at lunch? Then I don't get a lot. Like the, the whole day is just kind of thrown off, and I end up having just – I find myself mentally having the worst days. And so when I, when I get myself up in the morning, it's just, there's something, the the sun shines a little bit brighter those days, you know, birds yeah. sing a little louder. You're just like, ah, so it's, those are the, those are the days that I like to really, you just, you, you take stock. You're like, all right, this was a good, this was good. Things are good. You know? I love that. Uh, another one for me is um, taking a nice hot shower, right? Maybe you just got done mowing the lawn and you're sweaty and you're gross or you just had a good workout or whatever and you take a nice hot shower, you feel refreshed and you're like, I think I'm going to go lay down and really just like rest. Yeah. And then you get into a bed that's made. Oh, the fresh. And you, and you slide into that. It's, it, are you clean. talking freshly laundered too? Like, oh yeah. Like you just, you, you just, you just put them back on the bed. Yeah. Yeah. And you slide into there. You get out of those covers, on those sheets, and everything's smooth. Oh, I can feel and clean. it. Clean. Your yep. body's clean. And you just lay down. You're like, ooh. And extra bonus. <laughs> it's a nice enough day. You can have the window open. Ooh. There's a light breeze coming in. Yes, sir. And you're like, this. That was me this weekend, man. I had that happen. I was like, oh, this is fucking divine. Like this is. <laughs> The best. <laughs> this is like, divine. Ooh, uh, it's a Saturday afternoon. I don't have anywhere to be. I've done all my chores. I'm clean. 
this bed is clean and I'm going to make it dirty. And I just <laughs> mm, 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 snuggle in. I opened up my window. <laughs> I was just like, ah, you had yourself awesome. a moment is what you had. That, that was like a 1950s, like taking a nap on the farm kind of moment, you know, like just, <laughs> oh, it was the yeah. best. And I was like, oh, yeah, so good. It made me feel so good. <laughs> I love that. Oh, do you have man. any, do you have any more? The uh, more I think or? about it, I just, I'm going to come, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Those are, those are the, those and are then the, the main sheet ones. gets, and then the sheet gets dirty. Again, yeah, like I said, we go make this stiff dirty, and crinkly. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah. anyone listening out there or watching, if you have a simple pleasure, you know, sometimes it's nice just to stop and take stock of what makes you feel good and just kind of talk about it and share it. So if you have a simple pleasure, something that makes your day, put it in the comments, join us on Discord, pop it in there, social media on uh, Instagram or anything like let us know. YouTube, let us know what uh, what is one of your simple pleasures? What should we be looking out for? Right. Let right? us know. Yeah. We would love to know. All right. Well, completely different direction here. This this was released a little while ago, uh, way back in uh, February. But NASA had open calls for simulated year-long Mars mission. So basically, they're looking for folks that, uh, which, by the way, deadline was April 2nd, so missed it. Uh, Damn. But um, the whole point of this was to essentially – be able to test out uh, living on Mars through simulations. And it's like for an entire year and things like that. So um, I read about this and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, it involves a four person volunteer crew living and working inside a 1700 square foot 3D printed habitat at uh, NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. And uh it simulates the challenges of a Mars mission, including resource limitations, equipment failures, communication delays, and other environmental stressors. You got you to love that. Environmental stressors. As you know, that's right. good. Uh-oh, the oxygen's gone. What are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> tasks include simulated spacewalks, robotic operations, habitat maintenance, exercise, and crop growth. Also, crop dusting. Uh, so here are the requirements. Uh, they're looking for healthy, motivated U.S. citizens or permanent residents who are non-smokers, 30 to 55 years old, proficient in English for effective communication between crewmates and mission control. You should have a strong desire for unique, rewarding adventures and interest in contributing to NASA's work to prepare for the first human journey to Mars. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So um, crew selection will follow additional NASA <clears throat> criteria for astronaut candidates applicants so if you want to be an astronaut so you got to have a master's degree in a stem field <laughs> so it's engineering mathematics or biological or physical computer science from an accredited institution at least two years professional stem experience a minimum of 1000 hours piloting an aircraft <laughs> <laughs> candidates who have completed two years of work toward a doctoral program in science technology engineering and mathematics complete a medical degree or a test pilot program will also be considered <laughs> so it's like woof that's pretty uh Pretty big deal. But, but get those in before the deadline. <laughs> yeah, get those in before yeah. the deadline. But um, I was thinking about this and I was like, I think this is cool. I, you know, I think in the heart of all humans lies that uh, desire to explore and uh, try new things. And I, I was, it got me thinking like, you know, this seems like a terrible idea right now in my life. I don't think I would want to step away and do that, nor could I if I wanted to. Right. But um, two, two questions. One. Would you, like, either in the past or the future, or even right now, would you want to help contribute to this simulation? And uh, second one was, do you think you would ever want to be a part of a mission that would go and explore something like Mars and to be a part of it, assuming your current qualifications are all you need to do that? <laughs> Co-host a podcast? <laughs> Check. Check. <clears throat> really good at Left 4 Dead 2. Check. Check. <laughs> Have two dogs. Check. Check. Um would I want to would I want to do the research leg of this? I don't think I could handle it, truthfully. No? I no. I think uh I don't know. I have this, I just I think I'd make it through 
I think I can make through most of it, but I think at some point I would I would snap on someone. Like just being put in that just being being put in that pressure cooker of a situation. Like mm-hmm. and I think that's going to be the hardest part for anyone who's taking on a, an actual mission to Mars is this is a years long. I mean, presumably, I don't, you know, can we even get them back? I don't know. Like maybe you go out there and that's it. You're just stuck with these four people, you know, forever. You're the first mm-hmm. settlers. I don't know. Uh, I just, I, I think that would be very, very hard for me to be stuck in this small area for a full year. It's like a biodome situation. Yeah. You know, the classic Polly Shore movie. Everyone loves that. Everyone loves that movie. <clears throat> um, I think I could make it a, a a a good amount through, but I do not think I could make it the full year. I just I I don't I don't know. I think I, I think was, I would end up getting real real testy by the end. What if it was you, me, and Drew, the assignment desk <sighs> test crew? I think you and I could make it. I do not think Drew would survive that. I don't think I think Drew would kill us in our sleep. Oh, a hundred percent. Yes. I think I think he would he would he would lose Drew, his mind. Drew would start us. sabotaging all of like like our oxygen levels. He would he would do mm-hmm. anything he could to end that mission mission early. I just imagine you and I getting on a tangent about something and just then improving <laughs> and, and Drew stuck. just sl- slowly losing his mind, just being like, Fuck, <laughs> I gotta get out of here. You know? Just Guys, I'm gonna go do okay. another spacewalk. He's like, ah, where, wait, don't forget your suit. Drew, where's your suit? I'm Just, fine. Bye. I'm I want, I want, I want it like this. I, I want, want it to be want, like this. This is my choice. This is my choice. I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah. <laughs> put, it, put it on the log. I chose to do this. Like, put it on the um, log. I chose this. So let me ask you this then. What three yeah. people would you That's need to be teamed question. up with? Randos, I understand, right? Because there's a yeah. chance you're like, great. We don't get along. You know, awesome. <coughs> you believe the world's flat, yet somehow you're contributing to NASA. I don't know how this works, but okay. You know. <laughs> yeah. I'm I, trying the, to prove them wrong from the inside, man. I'm going to get to the bottom of this, you know. Only way to do this is to walk deeper into the belly of the beast. And I, right. I'm, I'm up for the challenge. That's right. Uh, three people. Uh, man. See, I feel like it's, I feel like it's a, a delicate balance because I could choose three individuals that I think I could hang out with, but I don't know if those individuals would would gel amongst themselves, right? Right. Well, who are they? So, like, if I were to choose, like, like you, I'm just I'm just gonna start uh, throw these names, like you, uh, Bob, and uh, Milos. Hey. Like, if I threw those three out, hey, you, Bob, and Hag, right? Exactly. <laughs> I don't listen. Oh, I love Hag. There's That's in a no fun one in no universe could I ever do a year with. <laughs> Dude. And I love you to death, Hag. Thank Dude. you for pushing me to get a doctor's appointment. The conversations we'd all have would be endlessly Woo! entertaining. <laughs> yeah. But like, I feel like individually, you know, with those people I could, but I don't know how you guys would, would deal with each other. So if I was, if I was trying to engineer this, I definitely mm. think you and I could make it work. Cause I think we have, I think we, we thoroughly, obviously, 480 episodes later, we thoroughly enjoy each other's company, but at the same time, we also have enough respect for each other to give space when needed. So I think, yeah. I think we've got that there. I would put Sam Cook in there. I think yeah. we could do, I think Sam's of, of a similar mindset. And uh, <clears throat> that's a tough one. I don't know. I don't know who the third person would be. Yeah. I mean, I would put. Beth in there, but I feel like that's not, say, that's like, not the game. That's hearing, not the game, not, though, right? I'm not hearing Beth. You know, well, I, if the game that's is the, to not get in trouble, the, then then that's your your. your oh, failing. that's the obvious but, choice, though, because right. right, like you know, we cohabit. Like you could throw Jill and right. Natalie in yours, and like, great, that's just cohabitating. I don't want, like I don't we want Natalie do. in there. <laughs> I don't want Natalie in there. That's a that's a terrible idea. Is no. that not good? No, no. If we're talking like, hey, our our job here is to run the simulations and like be a team. I'm like, listen, I mean, I definitely want to hang out with you. Are you and I both like we were talking about skills? Yeah. I mean, I mean, you and I will look at each other and be like, I think that's right. And then we'll move on with our day and then we'll fail the, the simulation because you're like, like, guys, you didn't plug the fucking hole from the oxygen. It's like, oh, why? Well, I, I thought right. you know, I just sitting there going like, I, th- I think this is what it should be. <laughs> Well, you know, remember that movie? What was that movie? That guy was in it. And we just start referencing movies in space. Yeah, and right. like, well, they, they did it. They'd fine. Yeah. yeah it's they just fine. put it's some bubble good. gum on there. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like as far as like technical skills go, um, 
I mean, I don't, probably the guy that would would have come to fix my garage. I mean, I imagine he'd probably be good. You know, from oh yeah, if we're doing standpoint. technicals. <laughs> Yeah, flip that switch over there. You're good. That oxygen stop yeah. flowing. Yeah, actually, just I think that's just flip that switch. I think, yeah, turn it off. Oh, okay, cool. I, I mean, again, if we're talking about just being able to cohabitate yeah. together is one thing, but yeah. if we're talking about actually like bringing skills into the fold, then mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, then then man, that's a whole different story. Because yeah, I don't know if you and I have a lot of uh, a lot of skills that cross over <laughs> into what we would, what we would need for this. You know, uh, I think, we're great I think problem we help- solvers. <laughs> We can help each other and our, our teammates, you know, be comfortable in the, in the end of their time. You know what I mean? Like we could help them be at peace as we accepted our, our, our doom. You know? Farewell, <laughs> sweet prince. It's like, it's okay. Hey, <laughs> guess what? We're going to finish this up. You just, as you rest, we're just going to talk about uh, all the times that, uh, you know, Batman, his, his incarnations, we're going to rank them from top right. to bottom, you know, as which ones we think are the best and why. You contribute if you want to, but we're just going to burn out the oxygen the, the best as, way yeah. we know how. As each breath gets harder and harder to gasp in. <laughs> yeah. We just know we're using it talking about we're using- <laughs> and We're also helping this travel. go quicker. Yeah. Yeah. We're helping it go, go, go quicker. Get out the dry erase board. We're talking. NASA we're talking just comes about- in and then, yeah, you and I have the walls are covered in our thoughts on different timelines. Yeah. It's just like, like, what did you guys do? Well, this is the biggest wall we'd ever had. So we thought we may as well use it. Yeah, it makes sense. We're just making most of our resource. Yeah. We're being resourceful. That's we're being we're resourceful. Being, sir. Yeah. I think we finally um, figured this out, NASA. Yeah, I think we did it. We got to the bottom of it. You guys, if you want, the- you can you can use this. Just make sure to credit us, okay? Just make sure, At my yeah. Get Podcast on all our social medias. <laughs> <laughs> so would you would you do at any point in your life, would you do this year long thing? Um, I think with, obviously with three as, randos. As, Assuming I had the skills, the skill set, yeah. um, because that's the big thing. I'm like, I can't do this. You're not right. going to want me there because <laughs> I'll give you a hundred percent effort, but you'll probably get 30% output. So <laughs> I'm big and I'm gassy. <laughs> it's worse. It's worse than my accent. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if I had the skills. Um, I don't know. A part of me would like, I, I, I would love to see it. Right. I'd love to, I'd love to try and attempt something like that. Cause I think it'd be so cool to be a part of something that you're testing to hope that would lay the foundation for a possible, you know, yeah. colonization of another planet. I think that's really fucking cool. Like I'm always, I love like you hear it's, it's like um, getting a behind the scenes look at, at anything, you know, yeah. whether it's music, whether it's movies, whether it's like uh, how a fucking theme park ride operates whatever like you just get to see the nuts and bolts of how it works you're like oh right. wow this is so cool like to be able to be like yeah this is what astronauts are going to be doing and you're going to help us figure out how this how this works and how this gets done like that's a really cool opportunity to be able to yeah. do that i don't know what stage of my life i would would have wanted to do that i'm assuming younger i, mean, I don't right think now it would be kind of cool but now i feel like mentally i'm in the right space i if i were yeah. to if i were to have to pick a period in my life now would probably be the most stable period. I do mm-hmm. not think that I possess the maturity in my twenties to go anywhere mm. near this, you know, and I, I know they've got, was it 33 to or 30 to 55, even at yeah. like 30 to 34, I don't think I was mature enough to handle, to handle this. I think now I'm in a place where I could, but it would have been bad news bears had it been earlier. If anyone's curious as to, what we would have, would have would have would have been like. I'm sure we have some old videos of us at assignment desk around that time period. Uh, oh, yeah. Me smashing a desk with an empty oatmeal cream pie carton for no reason and it's shouting, still one of my- <laughs> shouting in some. This is one of my like, favorite all time video. Can I just post that to Instagram at some point? Yeah, just ran and be like, hey, just never forget or whatever. No, <laughs> just yeah, under the Mind Gap brand, just like, hey, here it is. Just uh, if you're wondering. Yeah, this is this is what we did at one point in time. Doug's wearing this creamsicle uh, polo shirt uh, that doesn't fit him, and he's slapping the shit out of the desk with his oatmeal cream pie box. Like, so angry. Yeah. <laughs> so angry. Yeah. I, and all the vines that we tried to make for whatever reason. Why not? They were fun. Yeah. I mean, one of my favorite ones was, you know, randomly, we on TV? That we on TV? <laughs> You guys just filmed it. I just came in frame and I was like, we on TV? I was like, perfect. That's exactly Oh, I think we, that's how we vine. I just think we I just think figured we did. it out. Yeah. We did a vine, you know, and uh, yeah. 
That was. <laughs> I don't know fun. if I could. I don't know if I could ever do the mission though. Like I like like going to another planet. There, there's an element of excitement there. Yeah. I just don't. I don't think I would ever have the balls to go to space. I just. I I don't know yeah. that I could handle it. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to. I think that spirit is in me. Um, the idea of like being able to go out and test the frontiers of our known universe and to know that like you're the first person stepping foot on this planet right. and being there and whatever, but also realizing that's probably a one-way trip, you know? That's a th- like, right, exactly. I mean, listen, I, I'm sure NASA is figuring a way to go there and come back, but it, it, it's going to take some time. I don't know. I think I've heard some things. I don't even know if, if I'm inventing this or not, maybe because I've just been watching so much shit lately that it's all like blending together. But I, my understanding if I'm is to some extent um, uh, is to, I think, stop off like around the moon and then go onward from there. And I don't know how I forget how long they said years wise it would take to get there. Like just land on the there. moon. What's that? Like they're landing on the moon or they're just orbiting mixing, and using it as I think like I'm a mixing a whole bunch okay. of shit in my head, but I know that they want to, I mean, they're creating their own time zone for the moon right now. So like that's bonkers. Did, did you hear about this? The lunar nope. time zone that they're creating. Um, nope. th- this also will be a part of daylight savings time, which is great, you know, because you know, on the moon, you got to spring forward and fall back. I hate um, it. But the idea is that I think they're going to start investing in like building a base on the moon to oh, not only wild. study stuff, but also make it, I think, a place where people can maybe fuel up and whatever and then shoot off into That's wherever they're going to go. Um, but yeah, like it's very pot. <clears throat> I mean, listen, I don't think everyone's going to be like, this is the one way trip, baby. But I mean, like if you're going to be the first ones that go there. Um, you got to be able to establish a base camp that you can survive on mm-hmm. and then hope and then people will follow and then hopefully over time establish <laughs> it. So that is incredibly dangerous, but it's also so cool. The only sad thing is that Mars just looks like Arizona. So like, as far as, you know, you land there, we're like, we're on Mars. It's like, ah, yeah, but uh, it looks like Arizona, you know, right. it's rocky, it's red, you know, uh, there's not much to see. It's just like a bunch of, you know, it's, bunch, it's cold, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you have picture perfect described Arizona to me. If I, I if I had never, <laughs> if I had no knowledge whatsoever, I'd be like, oh, I know what it looks like now. Thank you. I know there's something like, because all I've ever known is the, the places I've been on this planet, the idea conceptually of like stepping foot on another planet is to me like mind blowing. Just mm-hmm. absolutely mind blowing. The idea of like going to space is mind blowing. <clears throat> absolutely, setting foot anywhere outside of this planet is absolutely just like inconceivable. So, right, the idea of having an opportunity to do that is pretty exciting, I think. But would I ever have done it, or would I ever do it? Probably not. Probably obviously, not. Obviously, excluding the fact that I have a family that I don't right. ever want to, and no discernible even. skills that would be useful to that. Right, yeah. Right. Uh, saying all stuff, so assuming I had all the skills and I didn't have the attachments, <laughs> would I do it? I don't know. I don't think I would, to be honest with you. Like, I think I think that is just it's a it's a step too far. But I, I yeah. it's fun to dream about. It's fun oh, look, I about. I admire the flying fuck out of anyone who's willing to put themselves in that position. Like, it is so cool, and all the accolades to those people. I again, I would love I would love to be. Uh, I would love to be that brave. I'm just not like I'll, I'm no yeah. qualms admitting that I'm just straight up not real quick. What would you rather go and explore Mars or the bottom of the fucking ocean? Okay. So we're presuming that we have a way to get to Mars and then mm-hmm. we are presuming that we have a submersible that will go to the very bottom of the furthest point and yes. everything like, it can handle the pressure and you're good to go. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Man, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. I'm inclined to say the ocean only because I have such a fear of heights. Yeah. But like I understand the terrors that are down <laughs> that are down that way. I don't think you do, Justin. Uh, I don't think you know because we don't know what's down there. 
Well, that's that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like we know, like, well, we do. Like, people have said we know way more about space than we do about our the depths of our own planet. So, I look in that regard, probably space. I would probably, I honestly I'd, would choose space over the yeah. ocean because, yeah, if you get all the way down there, you have to realize if something is living down there, the the. <sighs> Did the you just freak yourself to, out? The things it w- I'm trying to verbalize, like for a creature to survive at those depths, the mm-hmm. things that it's had to overcome <laughs> from a nature standpoint, the pressure of the ocean, the severe lack of light, like the fact that it's Food alive sources, and, yeah. and God help you if it's a predator, like what it's, what it's able to do. It's like nothing about that sounds riveting to me at all i'm like i'll take my chances with the vacuum of space like (laughs) i'm going to the stars baby (laughs) see you fuck you ocean like (laughs) later dude that is a really great point though it is a really great point yeah yeah awesome so let us know what would you rather do go to space or go to the bottom of the ocean and also do you have the guts to go and explore let us know we'd love to know and if you've ever been to space let us know how that was yeah, I honestly, you know, we'd love to talk to you. All yes. the astronauts that listen to our podcast. Yeah, all of you from from Ohio. Get at us, all right? All right, gang. Well, we're going to wrap up with a game, a game we did recently, and it is name the movie based on the plot in five words or less. So basically, we're going to be giving, Justin and I have movies. <clears throat> we're going to give... The describe the plot in five words or less, and we have to guess what that movie is. We had so much fun doing it. We're going to do it again. We each have three. Justin, you're going to go first. All right. Nominating you. Uh, All right. So the first one, Trapper gets a bear hug. Oh, is this Revenant? I I don't even have a... You did so quick, I didn't have my soundboard up here. Hold on. (laughs) Absolutely. I've never even seen that movie. You, well, I thought you did. No, never oh, seen okay. it. okay. Well, there I you go. I read the book, though. I read the book. <laughs> okay, there you go. So you knew. Yeah. 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 I was like, well done. I was like, that's what it has to be. Thanks. I was like, yeah. I was in the zone. Woo! Auto zone. Uh, okay, Justin. You, okay. Anytime you say the word in the or the phrase in the zone, do you sing? Do you sing the theme song for Auto Zone? I think head? I think of the James jingle? Conklin. And how he was like, you know, he did that on a podcast early on. He was like, get, get the zone, auto zone. I, and that's, I, what, that's, what, that, that's what they want us to think, Justin. They've, they've won. Auto zone has yeah. won. Yeah. Is what they I'm have. here to say. Assholes. All right, Justin. All right. Here is your movie plot in five words or less. Man questions iron deficient person. Sometimes these descriptions are so bonkers. <laughs> Man questions iron deficient person. <laughs> what? A man. Okay. Uh, okay. So man questions that leads me to believe that it's some sort of a detective movie or some sort of a um, like a procedural because he's questioning questions iron deficient person iron deficient. If you figure out iron deficient, you've got this. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna take a wild swing. Is it the mechanist or the machinist? It is not the machinist. Okay. Uh I I understand that based on how I worded this, it may it may have screwed you, but I still think it's worthwhile. So Okay. I get I guess I'm not overly familiar with what happens in when someone is iron deficient. So I think maybe that's where I'm that's, that's where probably my, it's it's my a huge is, clue. Okay. It's a huge clue, but also oh. it could lead you astray. So that's, Fuck. you know. Man questions, iron deficient person. Um. God damn it. Um. I'm just going to go every time I don't know. I'm just going to guess Patch Adams. <laughs> it's not. Okay. It is. No, it's ah! not. Uh, interview with a vampire. <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> God damn it, it's such a good one. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. I'm so mad at myself. 
Well no, done on that one. Because iron deficiency, you're like, oh, this person's unhealthy. This person, yep. like, whatever. Mm -hmm. Machinist is a good guess, right? Because I was like, how do I describe vampire? You know, like, with, I'm like, the whole idea is that they're iron deficient. That's why oh. they feast on blood and things like that. So it's like, because I said man interviews uh -huh. iron deficient person. You know, I was like, eh, that might give it away. So I'm like, what are you doing in an interview? You ask questions. So anyway. Well done. I, here's the thing. I have not thought of that movie in so long. That's also the trick is like, wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, is this going to be even in your repertoire to, to pull from? Who right. Knows, man. Know? Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right. So next one for you. <clears throat> Aging new dad mauls everyone. <laughs> I want to see this movie if I haven't. I'll tell you that much. That sounds You awesome. have seen this movie. This sounds awesome. <laughs> Aging new dad malls. Malls. That's the perfect word. Malls, everyone. I'm a new dad. Ah! Aging new dad malls, everyone. Oh. Now, you say new dad. Is the dad a human or is it a creature, right? Right. Those. That's a question. Cause that is a you question. You assume it's a human, but do <coughs> humans maul people? I don't know. It's aging new dad, so it means it's also they're older. So it's an older dad. So aging new dad mauls everyone. Is that how it goes? That is that is the description. That oh, is the shit, plot in man. five words I, or less. Like, like well, here's the thing. Cujo, this one, which I know it's not Cujo. <laughs> similar to yours, this one is kind of like that. Once you hear it, you're gonna be like, all right, I see where you, I see where the 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 path is, but yeah, it's not it's not an easy one to get, but yeah. Yeah, there's so many good clues in here, and I don't know how to how to quantify them. <laughs> Aging new dad mauls everyone. I hope this is like a kids movie. And just by the way you described it, it's like it's Paw Patrol, or something like that. You know, it's Paw Patrol. <laughs> Aging new dad mauls everyone. Man, uh, oh boy, um, I'm gonna say The Revenant. I'm gonna go with The Revenant. You're correct. Yep. All Fucking of mine are just the revenant. I did two yeah. in a row. <laughs> it yeah, is it is Logan. Oh, well done. Yes. 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 That's fantastic. It, again, it tracks, but it's a little tricky. Excellent. Like, yeah. Excellent. Like, yeah. I absolutely love it. That was so well done. Well done, sir. All right. What do you got? All right. Here we go. A forgetful man punches government. <laughs> What? A, for a, for, a forgetful man <laughs> punches Cyrus. government. Uh, <laughs> a forgetful man. <laughs> Seriously, my fucking I, I, my face is sore right now. I'm laughing so hard. <laughs> a forgetful man punches government. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> uh, a forgetful man. Punches government. This isn't. Uh... This isn't Captain America, is it? It's not Captain America. Okay, he's not forgetful. It's not the what? what no, see, but it's got to be a movie. It's not just a character. Uh, forgetful man punches government. <laughs> Probably part of your civics class when you're in you know, high school, you know. <laughs> oh man, this is. I feel like I did so much better last time. This is so hard. Forgetful man punches government. Okay, forgetful man. Uh, Mr. Magoo is no, no, he's blind. He's not forgetful. Uh, he's, he can't see. He's the also naked, not violent. The naked gun? No. Oh god damn it. Um okay, forgetful man punches government. How, how do you punch a government? How, how do, do you, you punch a government? How do you punch a government? How does one punch a government? Forgetful man punches government. Um Alexa, how do you punch government? <laughs> All right. Um so so as not to drag this out any longer than it needs to. I'm I'm going to give up again. I'm going to say Patch Adams. Close. Uh, born Identity, Born Supremacy, Born Ultimatum. 
But which one, Doug? But which Any one? Any of them. Because he, he's forgetful in all of them and he punches the government in every he single He does one. punch. You know what? I will fully, that's how you punch the government. Like if you say, Alexa, how do you punch the government? It goes, mm-hmm. Jason Bourne. Is Jason the Bourne. <laughs> Did you want to watch Jason Bourne? Queuing up Jason Bourne. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck that was good okay um all right last one here <clears throat> road trip through desert hellscape mad max <laughs> fury road there it is yes sir <laughs> yes like, sir and- <laughs> and- i mean technically it could be the first mad max too i was you like I mean? which yeah. pay- take your pick i mean it's all of them just you know I Whatever. feel like you have seen Fury Road. I don't know that you've seen the original. I so. have, I've seen the first one. I, I know bits of the second one. I've seen bits of the third. I've, I've definitely seen Fury Road. So. Okay. Are you going oh, to be sure. going to see Furiosa? I think I'll catch it on streaming. I don't know if I'll go see it in the theater. Dig so, it. Dig it. I don't have a strong connection to the Mad Max franchise. So I don't I'm either. Like, yeah. Like, meh. But, you know, uh, it looks interesting. Like, visually, it looks cool. So. All right. All right. Last one for you. Here you go. Here we go. Let me redeem myself. The wording is tough. The wording is tough on this one, Justin. Okay. All right. All All right. right. Dig deep on this. All right. All right. Greedy Italians chase the kids. (laughs) It probably sounds like this is. Know, it sounds like a fever dream you're describing. Yeah. <laughs> this, this this sounds like hey, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what super right wing conservative like website like tried to sum up this movie? You know what I mean? Oh, like, the Goonies. Yes! 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 Nice! Nice! Way to go! Hell yeah! All right, I got one. I will at least redeem myself a little bit. Dude, Woo. hell yeah. That's it's connected. You're like, awesome. I was like, I was afraid because when I think of Goonies, I don't think of like you know the three you know Italian and that was the part that the threw film. me off. I had to. I was like because yeah. I was going through like my first thing. You said like Italians chasing. I was like okay, like Godfather, Casino, mm-hmm. uh, Bronx Tale. Like I was kind of going through those, and then chasing the kids. I'm like no. I'm like uh, Home Alone was the next one. I'm like no, nah, but it's always, it was a single kid. And I don't think Marv mm-hmm. was Italian. Like so, like I was like <laughs> what all there, and then I was like well chasing kids. I that. Is Goonies, but were they? And I had to go through. I'm like, yeah, fucking they were. They were very Italian. Yeah. yeah. Nice job. Nice job. God, I love doing this, man. This is I a love fun. It's a good game. I love this game. It's a good game. Let us know which ones you got, which ones you figured out, and whether or not we're dummies for not getting them. So I mean, we are, but I mean, we are, but yeah. whatever. Who cares? You love us because we're dumb. That's, That's right. what my mom says. Uh, Justin, what do you got to recommend this week? So I'm going to re-recommend a band that I have previously recommended because last night, Beth and I went and saw them in concert here at the mm. Van Andel Arena in Grand Rapids. And I will say this was uh, probably, not probably, it was without a doubt the best uh, visual, the best performance at a concert I have ever witnessed. The Like this... This was a feast for the senses. So AJR is the band. <clears throat> there are some bands, I'll say this. There are some bands, I, I like their albums and this concert was, it, it was transcendent. I I can't even begin to describe how incredible. They're on the on tour right now, the Maybe Man tour. If they're coming through your city and you hear this and there's still tickets available in your city, I even if you don't know them, Beth had no real like background. Of, she'd heard me listen to them. But she went and she goes, we walked out and she goes, they have a new fan. She goes, that was mind bending. It was amazing. Um, so I would say, do yourself a favor, pick up tickets and just just treat yourself because it was such a concert. Um, but like I said, there are some bands that are like studio bands and there are some bands that are live bands. And while I enjoy both their albums and their live show, these guys are without a doubt a performance band. If you see them live, you get it. And so... Go check out AGR, support them. They're hardworking, fucking awesome dudes. And uh, yeah, it was it was a concert unlike any that I've ever experienced. It was awesome. Cool. I, I, I couldn't, it. we got home and I couldn't sleep. It was one of those. Nice. Like That's I was awesome. like, man, I need to drink a bottle of wine and knock myself out because th- I'm so amped. What do you got, Dougie? <laughs> I, for the record, like I know you'd recommended these guys before, but I still like don't know them that well. So I went to their Wikipedia. I yeah. scrolled down. And it says personal life, and the first sentence is the brothers are Jewish, and I'm like, cool, like good to know. 
Facts. <laughs> nice. Good Facts. to know. Thank you, Wikipedia. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Yeah. Here's uh, the thing. If you I, are on TikTok or Instagram, you've heard their songs. Yeah. They're yeah. one of the most memeable um, bands. Yeah. Probably. I saw some clip from their show where they pretended that the light went out. And yes. Yeah. They, they left the stage and they had some guys like sweeping it up. But it was actually them the whole time. And they were bum, like, bum, they off a mask. Yeah. And they're like, it's us. And they kept singing. Um, I'm going to recommend Neil Brennan's newest special, Crazy Good. It's on okay. Netflix right now. I really like Neil Brennan. I think he's an incredibly talented comedian. He's an incredible director. And he does, he's done several uh, specials in the past, like three mics, blocks. Um, and this one, like, just, man, banger after banger of a joke. Like, and the, the special was over like that. I was like, holy shit. Really? Okay. This is really, really good. He has some amazing jokes in there that I'm like, okay. And he's not. <laughs> he's he takes some risks and they pay off man big time they're, they're really it. it's really 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 good so neil brennan crazy good on netflix do yourself a favor check it out uh it's a great special so nice Hoo-ah. Hoo-ah. uh gang thanks so much for listening to us this week as always uh check us out on all our social medias at mind gap podcast be sure to like and subscribe on our youtube channel check the link in the discord in the discord check the link for links to our Check the description for links to our Discord, to our Patreon, and to our merch. Um, and, uh, you know, like, subscribe, share around, all that good stuff. We appreciate you. And uh, be sure to check out the video game stream on Fridays at 8 p.m. Central. And Justin is online as well. On Instagram, at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And while you're in the online realm, any platform where you can find and consume podcasts, you can find and consume us. So please do that. And like Doug said, like, share, subscribe, rate, review, all those things. Big one is sharing. Please just let one person know uh, in your circle that we exist. Be like, hey, got a cool podcast. Uh, I think you should listen to it. These guys are uh, funny. And, uh, you know, they made me happy because that's our aim is to make you happy. And then to eastaith.com, to eastaith and all social media, loveitimprovfilm.com, loveitimprovfilm on Instagram. All right. Woo. Thanks for listening, everybody. And with that, I'll say, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners and watchers, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.